Hi guys, welcome back to the channel today. You join me from the driver's seat of something incredibly different. Now, I think my channel, or maybe people that watch it, may not even know this car even exists. This is a 2000 Toyota Crown Athlete V. Now, a lot of people may be very confused as to what this car is, what it means, what it has in it, what it even is doing on the channel because it looks like a pretty random Japanese estate. But have faith in me, guys. This has to be one of the coolest Japanese estates that have ever been made that nobody knows about. Literally nobody knows what this car is. They see it in a car park and don't even notice it. So today is a very, very exciting day. I love these things. I think they're so cool, but you just don't see them. So today I'm here to expose this one tell you guys about it enjoy the day with this awesome awesome toyota crown and find some b-roads and see what this car is really all about but onwards to the b-roads a mix-up of Lexus and Toyota parts in an estate car so I would say that this was the Lexus estate they never made I know they did a sport cross in the IS but this is like an IS GS hybrid with LS styling as well so if you know your Lexuses the LS is this sort of shape it's of era of a 2000 Lexus LS but inside it doesn't really look like one you've got gs parts in the door switches you've got various ls buttons and moldings but in reality the platform and the suspension especially is from the is 200 this one is actually sat on is 200 coilovers which means it is incredibly easy to find parts for one of these cars it's just if you ever did go into any parts place and put the reg in they would have absolutely no idea what the car was so let's see what this 1j really has to offer in this size chassis a big lumbersome estate car so i'm gonna put her into manual box just down here and you can go into two and then two low which puts it in a you know the lowest gear it can we'll put power mode on as well because you actually have power mode down here very exciting and so three and a half thousand revs it does have a lot of pickup considering this is a completely standard you know bar a little bit of exhaust work and an air filter car with this 1j the biggest state car behind you it does actually get up and go so if we go back down into l 4000 rpm It's just so silent as it does it. Now, although this isn't a sports car or, or anything like that, anything really to do with power, there is still the traits from Lexus and Toyota from this era. So you do have the power button. You have the TRC off button just here if you really want to go sideways. You could throw about the big bodywork and actually get this thing sideways if you wanted to. But what's it like to drive? The Crown being a more prestigious model, but not as prestigious as a Lexus. This one came with cloth seats inside incredibly comfortable again sort of an ls trait from the lexus side big big steering wheel with the crown logoing in front of us awesome dials with like a shadowed tinted lens over the top of it all japanese switches all down here which i have absolutely no idea what any of it means i mean it's it's saying a very very long word in japanese to me right now absolutely no idea what any of that means but it looks cool that's the main thing there is mountains of room in this thing the owner actually bought this as more of a tourer to go fishing in and stuff but to be a little bit quirky and a little bit different let's get on to the main reason why I need to expose this car it actually from the factory comes with a 1JZ single turbo VVTi engine up front now 
Now these, this engine especially, is capped at the end of the day. Turbo that this car comes with, if you push anything more than 10, 12 PSI, they came out of the factory with 10 PSI, but if you go any further than that, they actually disintegrate themselves, I think I'm just gonna say, but have faith, because if you change this turbo, say you had 1,500, 2,000 pounds for supporting mods and a bigger turbo, you could quite happily get 500-ish brake horsepower out of this engine block without forging, without any head work, with none of this. So, this is, or could be, one hell of a sleeper. This one's running, you know, under 300 brake horsepower as a factory setup, and if you were to swap that turbo out, just think of the possibilities. This engine can take mega boost. It can take mega heat without really swapping any parts out. These 1Js are phenomenal. That's why everyone rips them out of cars and puts them in other cars. Because if you do end up changing out the turbo, there is infinite possibility with the brake horsepower you can get out of these things. And with minimal effort, you change the turbo, change a few bits here and there, exhaust system, blah, blah, and it will run some really good power. Now the Tiptronic gearbox <laughs> is good, mated to the 1J, but it never left the factory to rip off your face at all. It was more of a tourer and a luxury barge to go down the road in, but it's mated to that 1J, and that's the best part. It is the sleeper. Yes, this one is running relatively standard power and it is quite quiet, but the sleeper factor is that if you change that turbo out, it could be just phenomenal. Something that the owner is willing to do. So guys, pulling over, let's have a quick look round this Toyota Crown Athlete V, which, again, I don't think anybody really knows what this car is. Super, super cool, but I'm gonna pick out a few quirky features of this thing, just to get you up to speed. This is a 2000 model year Toyota Crown Athlete V, so it has the 1JZ single turbo engine up front, rear wheel drive, but let's go through the quirks. Coming up front, these little lights here actually glow a slight green from the side lights just down here. It's an accessory side light, I'd say, just at the top. Very, very cool feature, again, giving a little bit of more definition to this front end. Now, what I've done is just extended this parking pole. There's actually a button inside for me to do this. It's automatically on a switch, so it'll go up when you come to a stop and it'll automatically go up, or you can just turn it off and turn it on as you please. But, very, very cool thing, it has a little blue light at the top of here. So when you were parking this, you could see how far away the actual front of the car is from where you need to park. Very boxy design though, this. People would probably think this is an E-Class estate, I would say, from sort of the looks and the shape of the uh, top of the windscreen and stuff. Coming down though, this one is actually sat on IS200 coilovers. Still sits very nicely on these Lexus wheels. But again, this platform can cater to IS200 parts. So you don't really need to put into a search engine Toyota Crown Athlete V suspension because these can be swapped out for IS200 parts. So a very cool thing if you were ever to get one of these, it can be done with IS200 parts. Now, coming into the boot, because this is a big estate, absolutely massive boot on these, and what I believe to be a very rare estate boot carpet in this, which, again, Japanese fans will appreciate that this is a factory estate. Look at that boot liner for this car. Another thing to point out is, look at this. Right? This is just Japan at its best. So if we put that up, that actually fixes up to there. So you can get everything from this part of the boot. And then if you pull this up, you have the spare wheel under. And you know when you're just in and out when you are broken down by the side of the road and having a go at yourself because your car's broken down and you need to tire out the boot. They actually have a little bit there to keep that up. So you can get in and out of the boot very easily. Again, new cars are just coming out with this technology simple effective not on 20 years ago japan was doing stuff like this very very cool little features and if we shut the boot actually has a soft closed boot on it as well again 20 years on new cars are only just coming out with this sort of technology so 20 years ago japan had it on lock i tell you and if we come into show you this as well very very cool little feature actually has a button on the door here 
that you can recline the rear seats electrically. Again, something that new cars are only just doing is reclining the back seat on an electric button. Something that's just, I know it's so random, but it's so cool that Japan were coming out with this in the 2000s. Nice little grab handle here to get in and out of the car. Loads of space in there. I mean, like, it is absolutely massive in the back of this thing. If we shut that and go into the front of the car, sorry about my bag there and cameras, but again, incredibly comfy seats yes they're slightly old manish don't get me wrong but the love is there for the interior in this car very cool dvd setup here for your tv all japanese buttons just down here slightly tinted instrument cluster and another thing to point out these actually swing so you can press the swing button on your air vents up front and they will swing from side to side it's japan at its best here over engineering cars since forever there we go guys a super quirky japanese old school estate car with that one j up front let's go back on the road go and enjoy this thing inside you just have mountains of space it's such a luxurious place to be in here and i love Toyota's thinking when they came out of cars like this. It's just a luxury car that does its job. Everything is just where you need it to be. All the switches are where it needs to be, and it's exclusive. You don't find many of these for sale, let's be honest. You probably have never seen one before. I personally had seen a few, but never one on the road. So when this one came up for review, I really wanted to do it just to go and drive it and experience it. It has digital climate control from the factory. It has electric seats on the driver's side, not the passenger side, but it has electric seats in the rear. You can actually move them backwards and forwards, depending on if you want a bit more rake or lean in your rear seat. Again, a quirky thing to come from Toyota. The luxury side of this car is 100% there. Although it looks like what people would probably describe as a grand that interior so comfortable in here and that was probably the market at the time it was for uh, people to send their kids to school in but i must admit the, the really defining thing is that it's exclusive not a lot of people have these cars and a lot of people know that these cars actually exist which has got a cool factor for me i bet a lot of people out there wouldn't even know what this car was if it ever drove past them i wouldn't know that there was a a one jz engine up front it was rear wheel drive yes it's got the tiptronic in the center that's got a lot to be said for the japanese market because they were so far ahead of themselves just like this car is so far ahead of itself it had buttons on the steering wheel to change gear your porsches from that era weren't even doing that think about that and that is just why i love japanese cars they're so far ahead of their time